Hello! In today's video, I'm going to be showing you all of the basic tools to get started in Live2D, as well as the basic navigation around the program. So the first thing I'm going to point out is that when you import your PSD into Live2D, it will not recognize any clipped layers, so these will need to be done manually, as well as any additive or multiplicative layers. So any of that shading or any highlights that use an additive, for example, with our eye glow here, we're going to have to set this manually. So you'll see this blend mode here. And as you can see, additive is basically to lighting up or darkening. It's the basics with any art program, basically. And as for clipping the part itself, what you'd need to do is find your eye white, copy its ID, go back onto your part that you want clipped and simply put it into the clipping ID here and it clips onto it. So let's go over the basic navigation of a program as well. You'll see this part menu on the top left. So the parts list will show you every single part that you have. So every single layer that you had in your PSD will show up here as well as the folders that you've created for it. I'll generally recommend creating folders to keep things organized within your part list so it's easier to find things later on. This is also where you can change your draw order. So I would highly recommend changing your draw order before you start anything else. And you want to set everything to have a little bit of leeway between each part. So generally I'll do it in multiplicatives of two, but it's completely up to you how you prefer to work with it. And to change the draw order, you simply need to select the part and change it on the inspector tool here. So for example, 4i8, and that will put that below. But for example, with the face here, if I put this behind here, it disappears because it's been put behind the other parts. So with a project, this shows our base file. So this will include my source image as well as the model image parts. So if, for example, you need to import an extra part, for example, it will show up in this project menu and you would need to select it and create model image in order to be able to use it with the model itself. Next, we have the deformer menu. This is at the bottom left by default, and this will include all of our parts but it also include any deformers we have made. Generally, you'll be looking at the tool details and inspector quite a lot because it includes a lot of the changeable things that you can have with the tools in Live2D. I'll be showing you these as we go through. And then finally, we have the parameter list. So these are the default ones, but you can create extra ones and I'll be showing you how in a moment. So to show off the basic tools, I'm going to be using this mouth as an example. So what we're going to do first is you'll notice that nothing has a mesh yet. So generally to beginners, it is recommended to use the auto mesh since it's easier. You can do this by using this button up here, automatic mesh generator. And as you can see, if we change this, it will put a mesh on it. However, I will generally recommend now is the best time to learn to make custom mesh. And I do have a video on it, which I'll have linked up at the top here. It is a tad bit outdated though, and there is some new tools that I will quickly show off here. So what you're going to want to do is you can either double click on the mesh here, or you can press this button up here right next to our auto mesh, and this will bring it up in its own part, basically. And you'll notice that we've got a lot more tool details here. So these are our basic tools to change up our mesh here. So I'm going to go ahead and erase this first. So if you've watched my mesh video, that's the basic idea of how to set up the meshes. So we do actually have this new tool called Stroke Mesh Mapping, and I'll show you how this works real quick. So if I draw on here, you'll see that it makes a line of mesh for me. So this does make it easier to create parts like the mouth and such, and other things which have this distinct outline that you want to deform. They're also going to be adding in a symmetrical tool, which is coming in Live2D 4.2. However, that isn't out yet. By the time you're watching this video, it might be and it will be a new tool in this tool details section. So let me go ahead and quickly set up the mesh here for the mouth. So you might have noticed that I was editing the amount of points on here. So if you scroll down on the tool details, there's actually mesh mapping settings. So the width will increase or decrease the width of the mesh. The repeated density will increase the amount of points across the length of your mesh and the number of vertices will increase the middle part. So you could even use it as a basic line if you were outlining 
the side of a mesh, for example, before adding in the rest of it manually. And you can even invert it. It's easier to show with two points. And obviously we do need to cover the skin part of this mouth here. So let me go ahead and do that. So there we have our first mesh set up. So this is our art mesh. This is the very basic layer in Live2D. And the way Live2D works is we have things in a hierarchy. And I do actually have a video about the deform hierarchy that will also be linked up above. And I highly suggest giving that a watch if you're brand new to Live2D, because the deformer hierarchy is a lot more important than you might think it is. You can avoid a lot of errors if you are aware of how it works. So with a mouth, generally we'll be working on the art mesh level which is this level, basically. Anything above that, any parent to this, will be deformers, such as warp or rotation. So next, let's have a quick look at our parameter menu. So you're going to notice a bunch of default parameters down at the bottom here. We want to navigate to find our... Let's do our mouth form. So there are several different keyform creation tools here. There's adding two points, which adds one at the end and one at the beginning. There's add three points, which will add one in the middle which is what we'd use for this one in particular. We can even remove them by using this. Now bear in mind, if you remove anything, it will stay at the position it's currently at. So for example, if I, let's say, put this here, it's at one, and I move this up here, for example, and we remove this, it won't move back to its original position. So do be careful when you're deleting keyforms. And you can also custom add any points using this edit keyform. And you can either press on here, so I've added two more points, or you can add them here with a custom value. And you can even remove them here if you want to remove specific ones. Click it, delete that, and it will remove it for us. So one other thing with the parameter menu is you'll notice that there are three lines up here. And this is going to have a few important settings here. So there's going to be synthesized corners, which will basically synthesize the upper left, upper right, lower left, and lower right if you're, you've got a part with corners on it. So for example, with the eye here, if I were to set this up with X and Y, let's just do this real quick. And we're going to link these by pressing this button here. So now this has corners to it, but you'll notice that it's not recognizing the corners because we haven't set those up yet. You can just synthesize the corners here and then it will do it for us. And if you want to reset everything to the default, you can just reset to default values. Here's an important one I mention in a lot of my videos, which is reflect motion. So let's say on our eyeball X here, if I delete those, I've set up this side, but I haven't set up this side yet. I haven't set up the left side. What we can do is reflect motion on this side, horizontal, and it does it for us. And this is going to be saving you a lot of time with parts that move symmetrically, for example, the face. However, it can't be used for certain parts like the actual eye shape for the X and Y. So do bear that in mind. And there's a few other things in here which I have gone over in my handy tips and tricks video, as well as certain other videos that I've done. And these are less important for the complete beginner. So there's one other menu on the parameter window here. So if we go ahead and click the numbers on the right here, it will come up with this little menu here. This little arrow here will come up with select, reflect, adjust, and change. If we select, it will select everything set to that parameter. So this is a great way of checking what you have on a specific parameter. If in the case you accidentally rig something to the wrong parameter, it's a great way to check what you have on it. That's going to go ahead and select our mouth because that's all we had on it. You can also reflect the parameter. This will basically change over our minus one to one. That's if in the case you've accidentally set up the parameter the wrong way round, for example. Adjust will allow us to manually change the keyforms. So this is another way of swapping them round, for example. This will swap over the motion. And then we have change, which allows us to actually change over the parameter to a different one. So we could change it to brow form, for example. Obviously, we have got this one right, so we can leave it where it is. So I'm going to go over the art mesh tools next. There's a few things that we can do with the art mesh deformation. Let's say we're going to try and make a happy face here. We're going to set this at one. Now, if you'll notice a few tools up on the top right here, we have the little cursor, which is to just move our item. We have a lasso tool, which allows us to select certain parts of the mesh. We can actually move this on its own here. 
And then we have this little brush tool. And you'll see this is highlighted red because this is where we last selected. You can brush like this and I can move both sides. So it's basically a brush selection tool. And you can actually tweak the size as well as the weight, which affects how easily it selects what you want to. Next, we have the deform path edit. So what this does is it's going to place points like so. And then once we go back to the selection tool, we can actually bend it. And this is because the mesh is following our path. This is a great tool to use with the mouth. However, if you're looking for more specific movements, there's also this tool here, the deform brush tool. Similarly to the selection tool, except you can now move them straight. So some people will use this for more specific movements. If you need to move parts of the mesh, you can also adjust the size and weight, just like with the previous brush. There's one other thing that you can do with mesh and deformers, which I don't think people use enough. So if you go up to the modeling here, you'll notice this temporary deform tool. There's a bunch of stuff on here. And if you are an artist yourself, you might recognize some of these things. So let's say with free transform, we can edit the mesh like so. And there's other options as well. So with perspective, I've seen a lot of people use this for the face angles because this is how your head sort of bends forward and then backwards as well. But another great tool, especially for the mouth, is the temporary path deformation. So what this does is similarly to the other path that we made. However, this will allow us to tweak it a bit more like this. We don't actually have to use the deform path itself for this method and it disappears after use it. So that's the basics with the art mesh. Now we'll move on to deformers. So deformers are one of the core aspects of Live 2D. You're going to be using them a lot, not only for deformation. I use them a lot for organization as well. So you'll notice on my deformer list, I basically have everything within a deformer of some kind. And this is the way I personally organize things, but it's completely up to you how you prefer to organize. But generally, I will recommend trying to keep things as organized as you can. So let's go back to our mouth here. So you may notice I have a deformer set up here for the mouth. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. So what I'm going to want to do is select all of my mouth parts and put them into one deformer. So it's going to be easier to manipulate later. So I'm going to select my tongue, teeth, side teeth and main mouth parts. And these are already in deformers. When you're starting up fresh, you're just going to want to select all of your basic parts, for example. And I'm going to create a new deformer here, a warp deformer. So if we select this one and it's important to name these something that you'll remember. So obviously this is a mouth part. I'm going to call this my mouth. I'm going to create a new deformer above our other parts. This is going to allow us to move everything under it. So with the new deformer created, you will notice this green and red boundary box. So the red boundary box will allow you to simply change the scale. However, the green is what you're going to be using the most. You may notice if you try and click the middle, you'll move it. That's because the red boundary box is still on. If you press the minus key on your keyboard, it removes the red boundary box. This will allow us to mess around with our warp deformer at the middle here. So the basics with warp deformers is you'll notice that there are these little gray dots as well, as well as the green points. And you can actually change the amount of these on your warp deformer. So the first thing is the number of conversion divisions on our inspector. Let's say we change this to eight and eight. You'll notice that there are now more points here. And this allows us to fine tune the movement a lot more. Because let's say we use our deform brush tool, which you can actually use with warp deformers. We have a bit more control here and you can see these points are changing position and it's changing our mesh. And with the green points, we can increase this using our Bezier division number. So this is whip. So if we change it to three, adds an extra or one more. And then height as well, we can do that. And we can actually manipulate this point in particular. And this is on edit level two specifically. So you may have noticed that there is this edit level at the top here. If we changed it to one, it will remove our green boundary box entirely. If you're just looking to manipulate these little black points, if you're looking for a very fine movement, and we can even change these on here like so. And edit level three will just have the outer corners of the green box. So you can do more general movements like this. But most of the time you will be working in edit level two. So next we also have the rotation deformer. 
So if we created one above our mouth here, we call this mouth rotation. And sometimes it will place it in an awkward spot. For example, mine has put it on top of my head, which is obviously not ideal because my mouth is down here. So we can move this by holding down control on the keyboard, left clicking and dragging it down to where we want. So let's say we had it there and you'll notice that it will rotate like this. So you can actually reposition your rotations if you wanted to have a slightly different angle of movement. And there's one very important thing to note. If you're using a rotation deformer, be wary of putting any warps above it. If I was to put another warp above this, this warp deformer is not going to affect our art mesh. This is going to affect the rotation. So for example, if I tried to move this, it's not changing the mesh at all. It's just messing around with the rotation. And you may also notice this tool up here, which is rotation deformer creation tool. This is more important if you're trying to do skinning which I have actually explained in my dynamic tail video. So that was a very basic introduction to the basic tools in Live 2D that you are going to use to get started on your very first model. I would highly recommend just giving all of these things a play around, mess around with your deformers, mess around with your art meshes, all of those wonderful tools. Just try them out, see what they do. If you have any questions about anything mentioned in the video, or general live 2d questions do you feel free to leave it in the comments if you enjoyed the video be sure to give it a like i super appreciate it and if you would like to you could subscribe to the channel as well we come out with even more live 2d based tutorials and with that i wish you the best of luck with your live 2d project and i hope you have a wonderful day bye bye